Hi guys, welcome back to the OPD Essential series on Medi Lectures and in this lecture we will discuss approach to a patient with diarrhea. So starting with the introduction, diarrhea is defined as the passage of abnormally liquid or unformed stools at an increased frequency. Now criteria is given according to weight that is more than 200 gram per day on western diet and when we consider on Indian diet it is around more than 400 gram per day but no one is going to measure the weight of the stools so no point of this weight based criteria it is just used to differentiate diarrhea from pseudo diarrhea which means there is increased frequency of stools with increased liquidity but total weight per day is less than 200 gram so basically this pseudo diarrhea is seen in conditions of rectal inflammation in which frequency and liquidity of stools is increased but total quantity is not increased. Now when we consider the classification, the classification of diarrhea is again based on duration. So it is said to be acute when it is present for less than 2 weeks, chronic when it is present for more than 4 weeks and when it is present for 2 to 4 weeks it is termed as persistent diarrhea. So acute diarrhea is usually due to infectious causes, chronic diarrhea is usually due to non-infectious causes while persistent diarrhea is due to infectious causes with delayed recovery. Now here only let's be very clear that acute diarrhea is the one which has to be managed by general medicine department. Basically the infections causing diarrhea has to be treated in general medicine department while chronic diarrhea needs evaluation for making the diagnosis and hence these patients are usually referred to gastroenterologist. So we will be restricting ourselves to discussion on acute diarrhea patient presenting in OPD. In the end, we will just see what all alarming features and causes we need to know as far as chronic diarrhea is considered. So in the OPD, we will ask the patient about duration of diarrhea to classify it into acute, persistent or chronic, frequency of stools per day because more than 6 stools per 24 hour is considered as severe illness and then we will have to admit this patient. Then we will ask the presence of fever, blood or mucus in stools, presence of abdominal pain. So all these findings will be suggestive of infection leading to diarrhea. Now severe illness is characterized by any one of the following. So if the patient is having fever more than 38.5 degrees centigrade, there is presence of hypovolemia, dehydration, more than equal to 6 unformed stools in 24 hour or severe abdominal pain. All of these are considered as severe illness. On the other hand, there are certain high risk host features which, which include the patient aged more than equal to 70 years or there is presence of serious comorbidities like cardiac disease, like heart failure, old history of myocardial infarction and immunodeficient individuals. So why are we asking these things in OPD? So because if there is presence of severe illness or high risk host features, these again are the indications of admission. These patients cannot be treated in outpatient department, these have to be admitted in ICU or wards. Again we have to examine the patient and assess the volume status and we will classify it as no, some or severe hypovolemia, we will see how in the next slide. Now as we all know that diarrhea can lead to dehydration which can be life threatening. So we will first focus on treatment of hypovolemia irrespective of the etiology of diarrhea. Once the patient is vitally stable, we can go ahead with making the diagnosis, identifying the etiology and then going to antimicrobial treatment. So while examining the patient in OPD, we will check blood pressure, pulse rate, do general examination. We will first see whether the patient is hypovolemic or not. So what is the criteria for hypovolemia? If there is presence of more than equal to two signs out of these, that is presence of sunken eyes, absence of tears, dry mouth and tongue, then increased thirst and decreased skin turgor. If two out of these five features are present, then we will label that patient is hypovolemic. So the patient can be hypovolemic or can have normal volume. 
सो इफ देर इज नो हाइपोवॉल्यूमिया वी विल जस्ट आज द पेशेंट टू टेक ओ आर एस सोल्यूशन आफ्टर ईच लूज टूल सो वी कैन गिव अप टू टू लीटर्स ऑफ ओ आर एस पर डे एंड वील री एसेस द पेशेंट रेगुलरली विद इन द फर्स्ट सिक्स आवर्स इफ देर इज प्रेजेंस ऑफ एनी ऑफ दीज टू फीचर्स वील लेवल द पेशेंट एज हाइपोवॉल्यूमिक नाउ वी विल आइडेंटिफाई वेदर दिस पेशेंट हैज सीवियर हाइपोवॉल्यूमिया और नॉट सो सीवियर हाइपोवॉल्यूमिया हैज अगेन three features if any one is present the patient is labeled as severely hypovolemic so if the patient is having lethargy or unconsciousness then inability to drink water inability to drink and weak radial pulse on examination if there is weak radial pulse this is also a criteria for severe hypovolemia if there is no severe hypovolemia we'll label it as some hypovolemia again we will give the patient orally ors solution so 2 to 4 liters is given in first 4 hour and we'll reassess regularly in the first 6 hours if there is presence of severe hypovolemia then this is the indication to admit the patient we'll cannulate the patient iv rehydrate with ringer lactate or normal saline ringer lactate is preferred if there is no vomiting 30 ml per kg should be given in first 30 minutes then it is followed by 10 to 20 ml per kg per hour again we have to keep reassessing the patient in the first 6 hours till the vitals are maintained once we have treated the hypovolemia part of the patient then we will come to the management of infection so the management differs according to the history so for example if the patient has taken antibiotic or is been hospitalized in the last 3 months so we will suspect clostridium difficile infection so basic things first fluid repletion has to be done with ors or iv depending on the severity empirical therapy has to be given with metronidazole which is given in the dose of 400 mg tds for 10 days this is given for coverage of clostridium difficile and we can also send stool sample for c difficile along with routine cbc lft rft samples although this stool sample is rarely done then the second scenario can be there is presence of bloody diarrhea that is dysentery again we will do fluid repletion and start empirical therapy with ciprofloxacin which can be given 500 mg bd for 3 days or alternatively we can also give cefexim 200 mg bd for 5 days so these drugs will basically have gram negative coverage also we can send stool testing for bacterial culture e coli o157 h7 strain shiger toxin and stool lactoferrin if there is presence of severe illness as defined in the first slide or there is presence of high risk host feature like the patient is aged more than 70 years or is having any immunodeficient condition we'll again go for fluid repletion in this case also empirical therapy has to be started with ciprofloxacin and we can also send stool samples now if there is no bloody diarrhea no severe illness or no high risk host features here only fluid repletion has to be done and no testing is required as most of the cases will recover on its own so this is the basic management of infection in the opd now what is the role of low paramide so loperamide is a anti motility agent which can be given for symptomatic relief so what is the dose it has to be given 4 mg initially followed by 2 mg with each loose stool episode now the maximum dose which can be given in 24 hours is 8 mg now caution has to be taken and this drug has to be avoided if there is evidence of fever bloody diarrhea or mucus in stools unless we are also given antibiotics so if we are not giving antibiotics in any of these condition and we start the patient on loperamide this can lead to increased proliferation of pathogenic bacteria in gut so in short we have discussed that how will we approach a patient coming with acute diarrhea in opd how will we treat the dehydration or hypovolemia then how will we manage the infection what all lab test will be required now for the sake of completion we'll discuss few points about chronic diarrhea firstly chronic diarrhea is defined as diarrhea which is present for more than 4 weeks it is 
broadly divided into non-inflammatory chronic diarrhea and inflammatory chronic diarrhea. So non-inflammatory causes include secreted diarrhea, osmotic diarrhea, malabsorption induced diarrhea, dysmotile causes, iatrogenic causes and factitial causes. While inflammatory diarrhea include IBD which are ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. So chronic diarrhea has to be referred to gastroenterologist. But before referring, we can at least assess some alarm features and send some first line investigations in these patients. So these alarm features are required for screening of cancer which include age of onset after 50 years, then presence of rectal bleeding or melina, nocturnal pain or diarrhea, progressive abdominal pain, unexplained weight loss, fever or other systemic symptoms, lab abnormalities like iron deficiency anemia, increased CRP, SR, increased fecal calprotectant or occult blood, presence of first degree relatives with IBD or colon cancer. So if these alarming features are present, we will refer the patient as soon as possible. Also we can send some first line investigations like CBC, ESR, CRP, TSH. Celiac serologies can be done to rule out celiac disease, serum electrolytes, then stool occult bud and fecal calprotectin. So with this we have discussed in total approach to a patient with diarrhea and OPD. I hope you like this lecture. Thank you so much.